episode 43. I'm Jeff Kimmel, and I'm excited because this is actually episode two of Get to Know LSEO. With me today again is Steve Blackburn, and Steve again is crashing the wedding by bringing a plus one. Welcome, Steve. Jeff, thanks for having me again. I won't tell you who I brought this week because <laughs> last week I got in trouble. That was a spoiler alert. Well, now you can tell us. Go ahead. Well, I have the incredibly talented, uh, very tall, handsome Michael Ruth. Welcome, hey, Michael. Hey, folks. Thank you. <laughs> so this is uh, where we like to get to know our employees. Normally, uh, Beyond Local is filled with industry insights, tips, tricks, all that fun stuff, but now we got to know the people who make it all happen. And we have Steve and Michael here, and we're going to get into some questions so we know all about Michael by the end of this podcast. So, Steve, do you have any questions you want to ask? Yeah, well, I've gotten the pleasure to know Michael over the last year and a half, and I know that some of our viewers, you, you've been on what, three times? Yeah, this is my third, yeah. We're lucky to have you back. Third time's a charm. It's probably going to be the best one. We'll see. I hope so. <laughs> So I know that some of our viewers have met you, but, you know, we've got new viewers and, um, you know, people want to know more about you. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at LSCO who, and uh, how you help our clients be successful? Sure. So I'm primarily in content. I kind of manage all of our the content we write for clients and also our, um, our own LSCO content. And uh, under the tutelage of the great Kyle Cozy, I'm getting more into... SEO and the kind of technical SEO tasks that um, our other SEO specialists do. And that's, I'm, I'm still learning. That's a, kind of a work in progress, getting better all the time. A lot of great people around me to help. So I'm like a hybrid of those two things. Great. <laughs> it was such a great answer that there was no follow up. Right. There's, there's nothing there. Well, I thought maybe you would, you would go a little bit further. No, you couldn't have. No, so, that's all right. um, so great. Yeah, fantastic. So, I mean, some people consider you the most intellectual person here at LSEO. Who are those people? I don't know. Uh, no names, but, um, you know, that's the rumor. I'll have to talk with them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, let's talk about, you know, like how you got, what What was your professional resume? What did you do before LSEO? Um, well, I was always writing in different capacities um, until three years ago. I didn't know what digital marketing was. I would I wrote encyclopedias literally for like five years, and that that went away. And then like, like encyclopedias, yeah, like not not physical ones, but for digital. But oh, yeah, oh like, I was okay. thinking like World Book, like <laughs> yeah. You, you well, might they not were be old they enough, were databases but. of encyclopedia like articles. So I wrote those. Okay, um, you remember World yeah. Book though, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. in the back book. of the the schoolroom and yep. whatnot. Oh man. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I know too. I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> anyway, um, encyclopedias. Right. So uh, I did that for five years, and then I got into digital marketing, and for somewhere else, and then I ended up here, and um, just got have gotten a much better chance here to kind of grow my skills here. All right. Um, where did you go to school? What did you major in? King's College down the street, and uh, professional writing it was. Oh, okay. You know, we knew somebody else we just interviewed that went to King's. Allison, did you know her? Are you run in the same circles? Definitely not. No? no she's much younger than I am. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, so what drew you to writing? Well, I must have been like 12 years old or something like that, and I kind of looked around at the things my classmates were writing and things teachers were writing, and... I kind of thought, well, I think maybe this world could use someone who knows what they're doing. So I kind of <laughs> at twelve got Whoa. into the game, and you know, the, the world hasn't exactly been the same since. So, so do do you have like a, a favorite author that's been an inspiration to you? Um, yeah, yeah probably. Well, could you share? <laughs> <laughs> I used to like John Steinbeck a lot. Um, but I, I guess I kind of got out of it. You guys know who that is, right? Of Mice yeah. and Men? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I used to have just much more time for reading, and he's kind of a dense, his books are dense. And so I, I don't even read too much fiction anymore. Um, if you've heard of Catch-22, mm -hmm. that author, Joseph Heller, is, has been one of my favorites. Very funny man he was. Um, I don't read a lot of fiction anymore, as I said. I'm more into, like, history now. But writing is just something that gives me pleasure, and it... it, it it makes me feel like I'm just accomplishing something and even, you know, like in at LSEO, helping people with the skill that I have. I enjoy it a lot. 
So then to transition, uh, I have another question for you because, you know, I ask a lot of questions. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> well, I guess you're right, Jeff. <laughs> so, so when you left the Encyclopedia Company, which I still think of World Book, and Encyclopedia Britannica was the mm-hmm, other one. That's I, a big I one. Mm-hmm. So when you left the Encyclopedia Company, right? I mean, mm-hmm. content is a hot commodity in in marketing. I mean, content marketing's big. So, so why LSEO? I mean, you're a smart dude, and you know your writing's fantastic. So, I'm sure you had your uh, your pick of where you could go. But why here? Um, you know, a company of this size, I, I like it because it it gives me the opportunity to take on more. Uh, just because we we need you know people to do the the task. It's, we're not like a gigantic corporation where you've got just someone handling every little thing. Um, I'm busy a lot, and I love that. And I like uh, the trust that has been placed in me. People, you know, people trust me to go away and do a task. Um, and it's nice because in previous jobs, there have been time like downtime and I don't like having downtime. So I'm always doing something here. Um, it's, it's just been, it's been fun to learn in that way and probably is the best way to learn by just doing it and not having someone always ready to bail you out. It's, it's nice. Do you ever miss that downtime though? Because then you could read more Steinbeck. Um, no, he doesn't read him anymore. I don't think so. Well, he no, made it sound like he doesn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, read- I used to like him. Well, well, what did he do to you? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't miss downtime really. All right. So then, what is your favorite thing about working here at LSEO? Um, I guess the peanut butter pretzels. They are pretty good. <laughs> Yo, between the two of you, I can't keep them on the shelf. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't know you were a pretzel guy. Too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. okay. Oh. Well, well, now that we're, uh, you know, now that everybody's vaccinated and we're back in the office and and things like that. Um, so you didn't know this because you were working from home while just the executive mm-hmm. team was here. I'm looking at the pretzels, right, and I'm watching them go down. <laughs> And I know that, like, I, I get into them from time to time. I'm not going to pretend like this is, this is like, I'm just pointing out the pretzel grabbers. Like, I'm I'm one of the three musketeers now, right? But, like, I'm watching these things, and I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not doing that kind of damage to this, this, you know, tube of pretzel. And, you know, I'm not in the office. Well, right? correct, correct. Well, yes, I would normally see you if you're there, but, so I knew you weren't, Um and then I walked into his office and I saw them. And uh, let's just say that you've got some competition <laughs> now, so you you might want to like you know because we normally get a couple of a couple of uh, mm-hmm. tubes containers of them. You might want to put your initials on some before Jeff gets his paws <laughs> they, into they them. They don't last long uh, with the coffee. They they might be the fastest going item. Yeah, I I, I think so. I, I say it's more you than me. <laughs> <laughs> it might, I've kind of slowed down now because. You know, and now everybody's back in the office. They're not all for me. Mm-hmm. So, well, that, <laughs> trying he's, to he's on this. He's on this new kick. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, he's he's now he's trying to take after you again in uh, consuming thirty two ounces of water at a time, <laughs> oh, multiple yes. times a day. So I am Jeff Kimmel wants to secretly be Michael Roof. Because <laughs> I was just going to say this podcast is about Michael, not about me. But you tied it in very Good, well you, there. You, yeah, you're you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So um, let me let let me, you know, we talked about what you like about LSEO. So, if you had the power to change anything, or or, or let me say, add anything, what would you what would you add that we don't currently do, you know, to make it a better either place to work or more fun? Uh, well, I I'm not copying Allison's answer, but I love office pets. And it doesn't have to be the dog cat thing. I like a bird, like a turkey vulture. Or a turkey vulture. Yeah, or just like some betta fish. Something that's a little unique that would set us apart from like the office dog. Everyone has that. I've been, and I've had plenty of office cats. The encyclopedia place had five or six or seven cats, actually. Something a little different. Um, that's what I'd add. 
Where do I get a turkey vulture? You can pick, have... you can pick them up off the piston bypass. Uh, but, but they're like they're for sale there, or you just have to catch them. They're not for sale. No, you have to catch them. You have to catch them. They're wild. I'm not trying to do that. I, we want domesticated animals. I don't know about <laughs> how turkey big are turkey turkey vultures. They're big. Like they, if you see them from the ground flying up and, and soaring, they have to look like just your average bird. To see them down on the ground, they're like this man. Wow, big. Okay, because they could kill cats. They can pick them up. You know. <laughs> Well, if we're going to have cats running around, we shouldn't have a you know, turkey one or the <laughs> other. Okay. Okay. So, what about like what about something a little less dangerous like a turtle? <laughs> a turtle. <laughs> I would feel so bad for a turtle to be in a case, you know, unless you want it to wander around. Okay. I mean, would you what well, what would you put the betta fish in? Well, a big, big aquarium. Of course, they don't know the difference. They have fish brains, but I guess <laughs> what? Do turtle brains are big? <laughs> Turkey, understand? Are they? They're <laughs> reptiles or amphibians? Turkeys Reptile. or turtles are reptiles. So I guess I mean they don't feel emotions like people do, but they they have an affinity for you know kind of good conditions and bad. So if we got a turtle mm-hmm. and we let it, let's say like chickens now right there's free range chickens mm-hmm. what if we had a free range turtle would you be okay with that to go anywhere within the five floors well i don't know about the five floors because if it goes tries to go down a step it's probably going to fall <laughs> on a shell and i mean steps are like Ma- <laughs> like super mario brothers yeah, take somebody out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so would you be okay with the turtle yes but you need to give it a source of water would you make it would you put a leash on it god no okay okay all right so pets great all right, so that's awesome. That was a good answer. What do you like to do outside of work? What are your hobbies? Hobbies? Yeah. Um, geez. So things I do a lot of. I like to sit on chairs from time to time. Is there a special chair or um, does it doesn't matter? You like to th- try there's out There's a chairs? recliner. There's a dining room chair and each has its purpose, you know. <laughs> I'll sit in one at one time and another chair at a different time. Um, I like spinning vinyl records, for instance. Um, I can do that while I work, which is fantastic. It really helps productivity. Or sit in his chair. Right. Sit in the chair and spin vinyl, something I do. I'll combine activities. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, well, most of my hobbies are music-based. I listen to a lot of music, whether it's digitally or on vinyl. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what I do at home. Okay. Have you ever thought about getting an Adirondack chair? No. Fair. <laughs> what is an Adirondack? Adirondack. Is there those wooden ones? The wooden. The, yeah. the, the back kind of goes back, and you okay. kind of like gotcha. lounge. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, I thought maybe you know you could sit out with pants. That's a good question. You brought up pants for free. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about pants later. Excuse um, me. Do you like to sit <laughs> indoors or outdoors? Uh, well, so. Like Steve, I don't tan, so I probably will not be found sitting outdoors often. Okay. okay. Um, indoors guy. All right. Fair enough. Well, I still like to go outdoors, though. I like to be outdoors also, but Just I wouldn't... make sure there's some shit. No, I wouldn't sit in, directly in the sun. No. All right, so... Superhero movies are, are always something that, that people enjoy. So I like to ask this question. If you could give yourself one superpower, what would it be? Um, I would like to be able to change the color of my eyes, like, at will. So, what would you change them to right now? So, like, green. I've always wanted green eyes. I have blue eyes. I'd, I'd have them be green for this. And maybe for like, right now. Maybe brown later. So, like, when you're walking around and it's dark out at night, would you change them, like, yellow? Change them to, to kind of suit your environment, for sure. Like, if, if it's a sunny day, have them be brown. Because maybe I don't need sunglasses, you know. What were those glasses called that did that? They used to... I don't know. They used to tint when you oh, went uh, outdoors. Oh, and... two-tone, that's... Yeah, I don't something. Know. Transition lenses. There you there go. There you go. All right. All right. That was a... Okay, so that's your superpower, which is a cool <laughs> one. An, an original <laughs> one. Original is right. <laughs> yes. You know what? Um, what kind of skill do you wish you had? Um... Oh, I, I would love to speak multiple languages. 
Really? Particularly like the, the hard ones, like the hard ones to learn, like Arabic or, you know, the variations of Chinese, Japanese, the ones that would be hard for like a, a Westerner to learn. Mm -hmm. Those for sure. Really? Have you, have you done anything to try that? To, no, to no. I, I took four years of Latin, uh, in two in elementary school and two in high school. That was it's so difficult for me. And I think that, you know, if you were learning it for a job, you probably, you have, if, if it's a necessity to learn it, you'll put the time in. But if there's no kind of motivation for me to do it, I'm probably not going to do it. It's like a years long undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, if I could just master the language in an instant, yes, I would. I would okay. do that. That's cool. Awesome. All right. So a little bit more of a, of a couple of fun questions here. I, I call this section the your favorite. OK, so we're going to ask you a, a handful of things. So uh, who's your favorite band or musician? Well, it is Bob Dylan. And we talked about that last time. I think I'd, I'd love to use this opportunity, though, to shout out different artists that I like. So I'm, I'm really into the blues. You might know this. I don't know if Jeff knows. There's a lot of different subsets of blues music. So there's a type of blues called Hill Country Blues from like northern Mississippi. It's like really like rhythmic. They have like a groove to it, whether you're playing acoustic or electric. There's a guy who was named Junior Kimbrough. Uh, he played electric blues and it was really kind of like percussion heavy, kind of grungy. It was like mostly in the 90s, so kind of grunge influenced, mm. really like muddy, dirty stuff. This is not like 50s, like clean blues. I listen to that stuff a lot. It's really great for working, for just like driving. It's man, it's awesome. Do you play it on Alexa upstairs at all? Um, I haven't played that. I'm kind of afraid to expose the office to my, okay. my okay. deep musical interest. They would not like it. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> echo just said, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said when I said that. <laughs> so, so I know that you don't watch a lot of TV just um, because I know you, but do you have a favorite movie? Um, no, I, th I think you're selling yourself short with that question. I think there are interesting, more interesting questions about movies. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but that's the one that I had. So, you know, do you have a favorite movie? <laughs> Let's go back to... I, get, I, I guess, like, Taxi Driver is one of my favorites. Okay, and what's your answer to that? What do you like about it? So, that's a Robert De Niro movie, and it's like a two-hour-long, like, character study. So he's like this lonely taxi driver. He kind of, he's a little like, he's paranoid. He's got like fears and he's kind of like neurotic. And he kind of descends into this, like into his, his own mind. But he, he drives nights and he kind of just sees the underside of the, the city. He, like he drives in New York and it, he kind of, it's a really like kind of a slow burn movie. And then at the end it's, I won't give it away, but it's pretty incredible. It's a, that's a Martin Scorsese movie. You know, it's good. So... Imagine this, if we go back a couple of questions, if you have this skill that you could understand multiple languages, that'd come in handy if you were a taxi driver. Well, especially in a multicultural city like New York, right. for sure. That's good insight, Steve. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so we know that you're a writer. We know that you used to read fiction, not so much anymore. But uh, what's your favorite book you read? Um, the Book of Genesis. What about the, your favorite book that you have recently read in the last, say, uh, 12 to 18 months? Well, there's... So the last book that I finished reading, because I'm currently reading something now, it was, it was a book called The Vatican Prophecies. Mm -hmm. So this is about how the, the Vatican investigates... Um, supernatural events in the modern era like miracles and apparitions and things like that how they canonize saints really interesting to see how a, an organization of that size works and kind of works through stuff like that it's a laborious process actually hmm. did you ever finish obama's book i'm in the middle of it right now okay okay so that's the that's the book he was um, reading that's the current book great reading spoiler alert <laughs> so we'll have to, uh, if there is a part two, maybe we could get oh, on we'll there come and, back. We'll and talk, talk about, about how, yeah. how you enjoyed that one. So before we get into the last question, I'll apologize because I thought there was going to be a question in here that's going to lead to a pants conversation. And there's not a question here, so I think we should bring that up now. 
Well, I, I don't, I don't disagree. So, you know, Michael, we know that you're a uh, an animal lover, uh, especially of the the feline type. Mm. So, some of our viewers know that you have a cat at home. But again, this is a big production, and um, we have new viewers coming in every week, and new members of our team as well. Sure. So we'd like to elaborate, well, we'd like you to elaborate a little bit about your, uh, you know, your, your furry friend at home. So, yeah, so she's a tabby cat. Um, now, tabby is not a, t- a type of cat. It just refers to the coat. It's like you can be an orange tabby or a gray tabby, but they always have the M on the forehead. Okay. That's how you know that they're a tabby. So her name is Pants. Her real name is Sylvie. Sylvie was the name that she had. Now, I'll, I'll, I will call back once more the encyclopedia place. This was one of the cats at that, that encyclopedia oh, okay. place. And, you know, these cats are kind of, the owner took them in, but eventually would want to kind of find them good homes. I eventually got pants. So she's, she's ours now. And she's five. And she's, you know, sort of like a child in the sense that, she, you know, she's whiny. She's kind of irritating, does things for attention. Um, but a very sweet personality, eats a lot of food, really just like sucks us dry with, with the budget, with the, the, uh, fancy feast budget. She's great. And we love her. You're lucky she doesn't go after your peanut butter pretzels. Oh, we're lucky about that. So how come, can you tell me the story and our viewers, why did you change your name from Sylvia to pants? Yeah. So Sylvia's great. And we call her that, I guess when she's in trouble, but pants was like the start of like the the pet name for the pet thing you know how you've got different names for like your your dog or your cat just like cute names so pants because we started calling her sylvie pants and then we broke those names apart so she's got those two names but it it has kept on going there are multiple others I won't tell you all the others, but pants is the most common, commonly definitely used. Definitely my next question. <laughs> definitely was my next question. I anticipated it. <laughs> so what's your favorite thing to do with pants? Um, I love when she, if I'm sitting, like minding my own business, or whatever, and she'll just approach you, like maybe meow once, and she crawls up on my chest and kind of sits there and purrs. That's a great feeling. Makes you feel like you're protecting her and she loves you. It's nice. Perfect. Great. All right. So normally on Beyond Local, as I mentioned, we talk about the tips, the tricks, the industry insights, all the stuff that keeps the viewers coming back. So, Michael, why don't you give us something that you've learned over your years here about digital marketing that maybe our viewers don't know, a little tip or something along those sure. lines? Yeah. So in, in content, this is something that I've learned um, from Kyle and, and from Steve while working too. When you're writing content for websites, don't make it like a school paper, like where it's so formal that it reads kind of like research, write like you talk, because one, it's a better user experience for people to read that rather than reading like a a dissertation. And Google now is so smart that it knows when you're writing in a way that people like and when you're writing in kind of like a stiff kind of way. So write like you speak and your rankings will be much better for your content. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome insight. Yeah. I'm sure that our viewers are glad to hear that little tidbit here. And uh, I Useful. know that they wanted to, to learn some more about Michael Ruth. All right. Well, any more questions for Michael before we close it out? You know, I think that I've, I've gotten everything answered that I want to know. Besides, like I said in our, our last uh, rendition of this program, we may come back for a round two. So I don't, I don't want to spoil things. I already got yelled at by you for that once. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. So there you have it. There's Michael Ruth, our uh, content creator and jack of all trades. He's involved in a lot here. So we really enjoy him being here. Um, This is our Get to Know LSEO podcast. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you have questions for Michael, email them in, call them in. We're going to take callers, but we won't again. And maybe round two, we'll get those, um, (laughs) those questions answered. So, you know, in the digital world and digital marketing, as they say, content is king. Well, you just met LSEO's king of content. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) Thanks everybody.